James Bond fans here tonight. This next one might go down and get up a little So I am, um, I've asked to do the Skyfall soundtrack. I've asked to do it. I've asked to do it like nearly six years ago now. And um, I don't know if you know this about me, but I say no to absolutely everything. Um, so then I would like to do it. I was like, no, I would not. I don't know why I said those words, because inside I was like, yes, yeah, obviously I want to do it. Oh my God, I totally want to do that. I've been here for like six months, that's why I'm turning into America. And I said, say words like totally. And I said, <laughs> as I'm having a blast. <laughs> Literally, it's bizarre. And at the end of my sentences, like my, you know, my voice kind of goes up like, do you want to do that? Like, I can't really do it, but just, normally like, do you want to do that? That's what I'd say. And now I'm like, do you want to do that? I love really being Imagine if I was here for like 10 years, I would literally be American. That's basically what would happen. I love, I adapt people's accents. I love accents. But anyway, so I said no. Um, and, in, and in my work life, I say no to anything. It's kind of like 10% laziness um, and 90% quality control. Um, I just don't want to be everywhere all the time. Sometimes I am, but just so you know, that's not actually me. I don't know who's doing that. That's not, that's not me. But I, um, so I said no, and immediately I regretted it. I, you know, I thought I'd like, you know, treat them mean and keep them keen, play a bit hard to get, and it backfired, because they're like, okay, thanks for your time, goodbye. And I was like, oh my God, I thought these are the wrong people to play that game with. Um, so thank God, they, um, they asked to see me again sometime later, thank God, literally. And I just said yes, the minute I walked in the room before they even asked me, I was like, yes, I will, please, yes, I will, I'd love to. And um, you know, it was such an honour to be asked to be included in something. And I know it's big everywhere, but at home in England, it's like a real British institution. So I was like beyond honoured and flattered and humbled and you know, all that I could go on. Um, so they gave me the script um, and it was top, top secret. It had my name on every single page. It was so top secret. I thought at one point I might actually be the role of James Bond. That's how <laughs> top secret I was here when I was doing it. Um, and I was also heavily pregnant um, at the time when I finally got around to recording it and um, I knew the pregnancy wasn't going to suit me very well so obviously I've got the swollen ankles and I've got the big lips which is okay for most but I already have quite big lips so I just look like a punch most of the time. Um, but not only all those things but also my voice got lower so I also sounded like a bloody man. I was like, hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, some fried chicken, thanks so much. And um, apparently a symptom or a side effect, depends how you feel, ladies, about your pregnancy, um, a side effect of mine was, um, was the larynx gets lower. I don't know if any other women, there's a woman there. You sound like a man in your pregnancy. You probably know how to do that you too. Um, so that's actually why the song is quite low. I mean, obviously my voice is low anyway, but the song's really low. I'm like, this is the end. I don't want to go I do enjoy seeing it, but bear with me getting down those low notes. And I didn't do any press or any video or, you know, the red carpet or anything, because literally the baby was, like, ready to come out. It was like, his hand was already out, pretty much. So if I was coming out of the he would have fallen out. Um, and also, normally, obviously, I look like Halle Berry, so who wants to be reminded of not looking like Halle Berry? Not me! <laughs> but I, um, I had such a great time, and um, people, people, it was received so well, and I got nominated for an Oscar, and I won the bloody Oscar. In England, it's like a tradition, it's not, it's not a diss, it's not a sign of disrespect before anyone starts spreading rumours, it's a complete um, tradition. I, by the way, last night when I was eating my dinner, I bit my cheek, and I, I have a piece of cheek just like hanging out in my mouth, so every time I talk, I basically bite the bit of skin in my cheek, so forgive me if it looks like I'm chewing gum, I'm not, I'm chewing my own face. <laughs> <laughs> the party started earlier. <laughs> never, I would never do that, don't you dare, I would never ever do that, don't you dare. No one mince my words. But um, I can't remember what I was fucking talking about. I'm just so excited to be able to talk about anything. Oh, that was it, that was it. We keep our awards, the awards that we're most proud of at home in England, we keep in our lavatory, we keep them in the toilet. Um, so my Oscar is the first thing I see every day, because the first thing I do is I go for a pee. It's the first thing I do. And I sit on the toilet, so every day I start my day by laughing out loud at the fact that I have an Oscar, which is a lovely way to start the day laughing out loud. And um, everybody right at the top. I, I can hear you, but I can't see all of you. So at the very, very end of this song, guys, the lights, the spotlights, they come right up to you. So will you give me a wave at the end so I can kind of put a face to a sound, if that's all right? I will try and wave back. I do have to like preserve all of my energy and breath for the big note at the end to try and look dramatic, but I will look for you, okay? This is Skyfall. <laughs> Hold your breath and count to 
throughout that mini ballads. Are you two girls wearing hello jackets? Is that what your furry coats are? I love them very, very much. I've got a funny story about that coat because I fucking hate that coat. Um, <laughs> I hate that coat. And Xavier, um, who was the director, um, when I was like, I don't think I want to wear that coat, which is quite flattering for like the size of me. It kind of makes me feel like a bear. And he was like, you're really undermining all the effort I've made for the last few weeks. So I was like, holy shit, okay. I was like, okay, I'll wear it. And then actually, and also I wanted to use an iPhone. He was like, no, 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 no product placement. You're not Barack Obama, that's what he said. He was like, he was like you can't have an iPhone and roll up in a Range Rover. So instead he made me drive an old Mini, one that I barely fitted into. 
made me wear a polar bear coat and made me use a flip phone. And those were like the three biggest parts of the video, so he knew what he was talking about. He didn't know what he was talking about. They go and listen, but you look lovely. I've also spotted your t shirt. Your t shirt's covered in my face. Look at that t shirt. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I, I would wear it, but obviously I couldn't wear it. That would be terrible if I wore a top of my own face in it. But I know. I, 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 I'm going to have it. What have you got on underneath? You have not got me another one. Oh my God. What have you got? What's that one? Why, why, do we, why don't you change into that and then I'll have that one? Shall, what one should I have? Yeah, alright. Well, I've, I've got like an hour and a half left of the show. Oh my god, if you're doing it now, well, do, it, do it in your own time. Oh my god, right off. Are you sure you want to do it? I'll just go with my song. Okay, my daughter's going to strip naked. Alright, so this chair, I'm going to burn this chair tonight, right? Oh, he's taking it off. Oh, here we go. Should I wear it for one song? <laughs> should I wear it for one song? You need to help me take it off because I can put it on. I can't lift my arms up to get it off. And I'll wear it every day. But if, if any of you like post a picture or anything, can you just make it clear what's happened that I haven't just rotten up in my own t-shirt? Thank you so much, my darling. What's your name? Thank you. Caesar. Well, thank you very much, Caesar. Thank you. Yeah, of course. What about if I come down super, super low? And then if I turn around, just don't get my hair caught in that fan. Come on, how are we going to do this? Oh, if you, you turn around, maybe. If you turn around. I was about to get my hair caught in that fan. You know when Beyonce did that? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll take it. She's probably wearing a weave. This is my hair, it might all fall out. <laughs> Hang on, how do I do this? Oh, I, I just get out of shot. There we go. Hi! Thank you, Caesar. Oh, hey, Caesar. I don't know how I'm going to get out from here. I don't know how I'm going to get out. <laughs> Oh God, I've got spanks on everything. This is really difficult. Oh my God. Would you mind holding my microphone so I can put my new t-shirt? many sleepless nights because um, when the tour started I was in better shape. I'd be working out every day and getting my blood you know, flowing and my stamina going for all of you but as the tour's gone on not so much. Um, <laughs> especially since we sort of got into Texas and stuff like that I've mainly been eating barbecue food a lot. Um, so before when the tour started um, my bum was maybe like three or four inches bigger than this chair when it was flat and splattered out. Now it's probably like eight or nine <laughs> inches bigger than this chair when it's flat and splattered out. So the whole tour, um, smaller bum or bigger bum, um, it's always been a bit touch or go every night when I sit down that I might topple off. Someone is always filming, so I get paranoid that there might be a viral video of me falling off. Um, and I don't wear tights because I get too hot, so basically it's all be out. Um, so last sort of 20 shows, I finally worked out a way to sit on this chair without it being a disaster, which is just a casual perch on the corner, like, oh, hi, how you doing here? And then underneath my ball gown, I lift a leg and I just slowly glide on. No, I haven't fell, I haven't fell off properly the whole tour. How good is that? It's terrible. The other habit I have is of, of standing back up to like, talk to someone and then I have to do the whole thing again, which is, is more risk of it happening. But I'm, uh, I'm going to do, um, do a song for you now, um, obviously. That's all that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm going to do a song for you off of my new album, and it is... Um... Oh, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Oh, thank you very much. It's a beautiful shirt. <laughs> and uh, it's a song that I wrote um, years ago now, it took me a long time to write 25, I'm now 28, so it took me quite a long time to write that one. But I wrote this one um, after I was driving, and I drove past, have any of you ever been to, have any of you ever been to England? Have any of you ever been to England? Yeah. Lots of you. 
Um, well, I'm, I was, I was first ten years of my life I spent in North London, and the following ten years I spent in South London. Um, so I'm a bit of both. I'm quite neutral. Um, there's, a, there's a bit of beef between North and South, but I'm alright. I kind of lie in the middle. And there was a park in South London that I used to spend a lot of my time with, um, with my best friends from when I was a teenager. And I drove past this park, and I had a, a mental breakdown. Like literally, I had to pull over. It was like ugly crying, conjunctivitis crying. <laughs> and I might have crashed my car. Um, so I pulled over, and all these memories of um, me and my me and my friends when we were teenagers. Um, flooded back to me and it was overwhelming and I realised, um, as controversial as it sounds, that I miss being a teenager. Um, do any of you miss being a teenager? It's not all you know, it, yeah, it's a few of us. And I, and I know that you know, being a teenager can be really brutal, um, and mine was sometimes. I felt like I was, it just felt like I was in jail forever, that's very difficult to tell about. Um, and no matter what happened, I did not want to turn into my mother, and slowly I am. Um, I'm not sure we can all relate to that with us girls. Um, none of us want to be like our mothers, really, do we? But we are all our mothers. Um, we just suck it up and deal with it. But I, um, but I, I just miss my friendships, and we're all actually friends still, um, which is quite an amazing feat for all of us because we all have very busy lives, and um, lots of us have got children now and stuff like that. Um, one of the main issues with me not seeing them a lot, I mean, I have a very good excuse, obviously, because I'm very glamorous. Not really, but it's a bit glamorous, not at all. This is glamorous, but back there, trust me, it's not. I'm basically, it's like a ratio of like eight men to like two women out of ten, so you can imagine it smells a lot of the time. <laughs> Um, but, and I have a son and a partner and a boyfriend, so they, they smell as well because they're men. Um, but basically, this is basically a speech about bashing men. So I'm about to tell you that I don't like my friend's husbands. Um, so this whole speech is about me not liking men, basically. Um, but I always find that my girlfriend's husbands just get in the way. They get in the way of us having a good time. They get in the way of us letting our hair down. Um, I know, there's some cheers and there's some booze from the men. And don't get me wrong. We do love you guys. It's like one of our girlfriends. Just back off. Just back off from our girlfriends. Because we do love our girlfriends more than we love you. Like but I'm just going to start the song now before I dig myself any deeper with my own male fans. There's not many of you, so I don't mind. It's mainly women. But anyway, uh, I wrote this song about it. Um, luckily, I was booked into the studio the following day, so being a drama queen. I obviously wrote a song about it. Um, I can really shine the shit. I can, I can write a song and do do from anything. <laughs> so um, here we go. This is a uh, mini. Oh, come on. This is Van, everybody. Say hello to Van, everyone. And this is Ben over here. I'm going to miss our little acoustic section. Oh, no, I'm going to miss it. All right. You never said my hand. Are any of you drunk, by the way? Are any of you drunk? <laughs> I know, it's a weird day, it's a work day, but it's Thanksgiving soon, so let your hair down, you know. The drunk you get a bit of our show is because you're wearing a cool. This is me and years ago. I hope you wanted to have fun Learning to fly, learning to run Let my heart decide on Sometimes I just feel it's only me who can stand the 
they can't look me in the eyes scared at me I try to think of things to say like a joke or memory but they don't recognize me now in light of day So I've made it a kind of goal in my life since like 2009 um, to learn everything about her and it's kind of gotten to the point now where it's a bit creepy because um, I have Google alerts on her so basically I don't, I can't miss a thing. Um, I know where she is, what she's doing, when she's doing it, what she's doing it for. Um, so I, yeah, basically I, I, don't, I don't want to miss anything so I make sure I know everything but also I don't know her so it's not even like we're like pal and like, oh I just love my old pals and it's like I don't know her and I'm obsessed with her. So it's a bit creepy. And she actually came to a show. Um, she came to a show in Nashville, um, which blew my mind, as you can imagine. Um, and then I spotted her um, as I was walking to come on stage. 
and she was going to the restroom, and I followed her in to see her. <laughs> and then I realised, oh my god, my, my chat, and I, you know, and I introduced this song because it's inspired by her, my, my introduction about Alison Krauss is, you know, it's real because I am obsessed with her, and I even followed her into a toilet. Um, and she was very polite, and she was like, no, thank you, but thanks for having me, can I go to the toilet now? I was like, shit. <laughs> I didn't see anything, she, I, I wasn't in that, that long when I, I, I knew it was really myself. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this song um, is the most country-esque song that I've ever written. Um, oh, oh, look, they've got a country fan over there. Oh, we've got a few. I, I'm a massive country fan. Um, I mean, I, I shan't be delving into the country world. I know my strengths. I will stick to my pop ballads. Um, but I do enjoy this little fleeting moment. Um, it's obviously a bit more that you know ramped up uh, the version we're about to do um, but this song is inspired by her not not the meaning of the song because it's a song by Yerman and that'd be really creepy she might actually get a strain and all the way it's a topic that was about her as well but um, just you know the vibe of the song and um, everybody this is Eric over here say hello to Eric and this is Pete over here and this is Derek over here on the end and I'm going to warn you um, but at the end of this song, there is a key change, which I find overwhelming for my diaphragm. And sometimes it makes me go, Shh. So if you hear, <laughs> I'm not even lying, I'm not even trying to be funny now, I'm being real. So if you hear a rip-roaring sound coming through the speakers, do not be alarmed. It's just me and my dinner, okay? Don't worry about it. Sing along with me so you don't hear the belch, okay? <laughs> this is Don't You Remember. Thank you. 